and she yeah. gives me a tour of this beautiful house. You know, a 20,000 square foot, you know, 20 bedrooms, beautiful. Wow. Five and a half okay. acres. What a crazy story. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer, and I'm joined here by Chris Pinto from Beach Limo NY, obviously based in New York. And so thanks for joining me today, Chris. Mark, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I was just telling Chris before I started shooting this video, I was making content the other day, my usual whiteboard stuff. And, you know, I don't love creating it. I like talking to operators more and I love hearing their stories. So I actually posted in Limo Marketing Mastermind, a Facebook group with about 23, 2400 operators in it who would be interested in getting interviewed and sharing your story. And Chris was one of the people who not only volunteered, but we spoke on the phone and he's got a lot of experience, been in the industry a long time. Let's jump back into before you were even in the industry. What's your background kind of? Have you always been from New York or? Yeah, so always from New York, Long Island specifically. It's kind of funny because I was not in this at all. I was actually in the fitness business and owned uh, several personal training studios. And one of my clients owned a very large limo company on Long Island. And he came in basically, you know, to kind of lose weight. He was actually over like 300 pounds and ended up losing over 150 pounds working out with me. And I always kind of admired what he did. And we became very close, as you know, you would think just, you know, monitoring his daily exercise and, you know, his eating habits. And we became close. And I used to go down there and check out what he had going on. And at the time, he was probably the largest on Long Island with running like 80 plus vehicles. So I was in the fitness business and I was also coaching women's volleyball at NYU. And, uh, you know, I stayed close with him and watching what went on. And I started to get involved a little bit when I was in the off season and kind of start a whole separate branch for him and getting involved in athletics because that was kind of a background that I had. So he went out and purchased like 24 coach buses and we started building the transportation side of it. Um, Whoa. And, you know, working with different schools and, you know, I kind of like I fell in love with it because it was very different than my day to day. And I'm just I being started- a personal trainer, right? Yeah, just being a personal trainer. And you know, like I said, we hit it off. Right? I was seeing him five to six times a week. Oh, wow. You know, he was just a great guy, like a great guy that you know, he was like a father. He was like a mentor to me. You know, nice. his business mindset was really unbelievable in what he built. You know, and I, I learned so much from him. Yeah. And then as from coaching, they made a lot of the coaches part time. And I wasn't in a situation in life to have a part time job. And I went back to him. He was like my first phone call. And I said, I, I can't believe this. They, you know, now what do I do? He's like, this is great. Come work for me. And I kept the gym thing going and I would go work for him basically in the afternoons instead of going to practice. And we, you know, built the whole sector of the buses. And that's where I kind of like dove in and, and learned the business really well. And then unfortunately, he had a, they had an accident. Uh, I don't know. You probably remember back where a kid stuck his head out of the, the hatch. Uh, like on a prom and the kid was decapitated sadly so unfortunately that was the end of his you know the end of his business as well Um, when was was that like how many years into it he was in business for like close to 30 years it was a big company in nassau county wow so that was a killer just to watch all of that unfold you know and see how it, it can greatly affect someone and you know everything that he built was almost taken from him overnight sadly you know there was insurance issues issues with the vehicle and it was one of those double decker buses Oh. So, you know, that was how I first got into it. And then went back into the fitness business again, you know, kind of full time because I, the, you know, the transportation I was working kind of, like we said, fell apart. Yeah. Um, and then I started it back up as a, as a side hustle of just trying to make extra money and kind of getting, you know, behind the wheel. And I was kind of burnt out from doing the personal training thing and was doing this for side hustle. And, you know, next thing I know, I was had two cars going and then three cars going. And then I was struggling with trying to do things the right way, meaning get insurance. Yeah. Um, because at the time, New York wasn't taking on any new people. Like wherever I would go, no one would write for me, yeah, which was did. really disappointing. And apologies, because I want to get to that. Um, but before we lose the original thread with the whole bus thing. So I'm just curious. So he brought you on. You said he bought like 20 buses. He just was like, wow. Yeah, he he was so crazy and out of his mind. I'm like, you know, Ken, let's start with one. And next thing I, she's like, I got 20. They're on their way. 
you know, Please. and then, you know, thank God, like a lot of the connections with the schools and, you know, successful with coaching, everyone was willing to take a chance because they wanted to go with the local guy, you yeah, know, and course. a lot of the, the, the local schools, we would go in there and show them a brand new bus. And at the time, it's funny, you think back, that was when Wi-Fi was like the greatest thing in the world to have on the bus. Yeah. You know, like, wow, kids could do their homework on the bus. And it was like reinvented the wheel. <laughs> um, so, those, so those like little things is what set us apart, you know, by having these Wi-Fi cards back then on the buses. And, you know, we ended up growing it. We had like 20 buses where we would do a lot of the private schools and we would do, you know, a lot of the big universities and, you know, it worked out great. So then were you handling kind of sales for him because you were a I, coach and you had kind of had an in and I'm guessing once you know someone, they probably know a lot of exactly. people and yeah and one sport leads to the other you know i was lucky where i knew some of the football coaches which you know as we know the football coaches are kind of the top dog oh and, yeah you know, sure. we got we got it's all with the them. money and then <laughs> you know the baseball coach slowly starts to hear and he's like oh wow you know and like i said the wi-fi was such a big thing for the kids especially especially if they're going to be on a 10-hour road trip you know it was the greatest thing for them you know was to be able to get stuff done while they were on the road Oh, totally. Yeah, that's so, huge. And then, you know, and then obviously the kids watching movies and this was when all that really, you know, the DVDs were coming out and, you know, obviously we didn't have streaming back then, but it was, you know, it was that type of environment where it worked out great. And nice. the newer technology with the buses, it wasn't an old, you know, smelly school bus. It was a beautiful, you know, Mercedes, etc. cetera, bus. So this was, in, wow. you know, like I said, the early 2000s. Sure, those weren't cheap, man. 20 of those. Woo! No, it was crazy. You, you know, he was always a go-getter. And that's what I really admired him. That's where, you know, I'm very fortunate, you know, to, to learn some of those things and not being able, not being afraid to take a chance, you know, which I think in this industry, as most of us would agree, it's the biggest thing is not being afraid to take a chance. No, totally. Wow. That is so cool. I mean, how that worked out that he was a client, but the cool thing is you got to see him so many days a week and he probably saw, yeah, I think every business owner and you probably even do this now, you can kind of sense talent, right? You spend enough time with someone and I feel like pretty much anyone can learn anything. In certain industries, sure, you like software development, you know, there might be a few years, whatever training you have to go through, but you know, you, you pick an energetic, you know, sharp person who's ambitious and it sounds like he found you. And so you were responsible then for like, landing new accounts and sales and that sort of thing for him. Sure. And I, you know, that's where I felt very comfortable too, as you know, from the athletic side, you know, going in and speaking to athletic directors or coaches. Totally. It, it was a great scenario for me. You know, it was what I love to do. It was, it came very naturally. Yeah. Um, no, you, you had know, it in. And, and you, you knew their in. language and everything and how things exactly. worked. and Exactly. And what they had to do to get it approved, totally. you know, and what we had to do to, you know, necessarily give back and to get into some of the schools. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, so was it, how many years later did this tragic thing happen? And then it shut down his business. Just, yeah, I can't imagine the lawsuits. Yeah, that's exactly kind of what happened. Um, you know, it was a couple of years later. And so then you went back to fitness and you didn't do that long before you started what driving on the side or, or where did you start doing Uber and then get back into a chauffeur job or, so or was, how did that happen? Was, this was still before Uber. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, there was no Uber. I was just kind of doing it on the side for, you know, some of the personal training clients, you know, and they would spread the word, you know, just airport jobs or somebody wanted, you know, to go out for the night and not, you know, worry about drinking and driving. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before Uber, that was like, what, 2011 or? Yeah, it was yeah, like 2012, somewhere in there. right around there, right? Yeah. And that was so I was doing it, you know, just to the side, trying to make extra money. You know, I knew that I didn't want to keep doing the fitness thing. It was just kind of the game plan of figuring out what to do and yeah. kind of what direction to go in. You know, and I had a, ni a nice book because people, like you said before, honest, you know, people trusted in me. Yeah. So, you know, I, I dabbled in, in several different things when I had the gym business. I also started a snowplow company as well. Oh, really? OK, you know, so you're very entrepreneurial then. You've done yeah, other. And, you know, nice. we had days where, you know, it would snow for three days and now the gym's closed. And I'm like, now what do I do? You know, so I went, <laughs> it actually I went, works out perfectly, right? It gives you something to when the gyms are, uh, you know, closed or, or empty. <laughs> it did. And then, you know, a lot of those gym clients, like we put like a, you know, a, like a brochure as people were walking in. And they, you know, I did driveways and sidewalks and businesses, you know, and I ended up picking up a whole little book of business that way. And then, you know, when I started to do the car stuff, I basically sent out like a blast to, you know, 10, 15 people. You know, yeah. like anything else, you show up on time, dress the part, you know, show yeah. up from point A to point B. It spreads very quickly. No, totally. And before Uber, because like, 
I, I don't even know because don't get me wrong, car service, going to the airport, rides that have to happen at a certain time for the masses, and especially for rides that are like, oh, I need a ride right now. It makes sense, right? But it was never, you know, before that, it was like, yeah, you call a car service or I guess a taxi, right? But it's even better when you have someone maybe local that you know that could exactly. actually give you the ride. Plus they, they keep the money, right? Rather than right. whoever it might and, be. And that's what it was. I mean, they knew that I was, you know, I don't want to use the word hustling, but they knew that I was, you know, trying to better myself. Um, yeah, no, you I, know, was, I think that's a good word. That You know, you were a hustler in a way, right? Fitness, yeah. like if that was not busy, you're doing the the snow plowing, like I look at it as like a good thing. You know, it's like, it means you're, you're getting after it. You're trying new things. And, um, and so when did it go from being, hey, I'm just, you know, driving some of these clients here to like, yeah. hey, I'm going to take this seriously. Yeah. So it, it kind of happened pretty quickly. Um, and then I hired, you know, one or two guys that started to help me out. And that's where I wanted. So I'm like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I need to be legal. So yeah. that's when I started. Were they deciding. like employees or 1099? Because I always get those questions like, should I be hiring employees? And I know most guys today, newer guys that don't have enough work, most of them, well, I've heard the model and we're curious if you've heard about this, they kind of like lease the vehicle to them and, and whatever. You probably heard of that. Yeah. What did you do I, back, I mean, back I, then? It was crazy. I mean, to give you an example, like I would literally do like a 3 a.m. job myself. And then I would drive, I had like a Suburban, and then I would drive to the gym to see my first like client at six. And I would have one of like a retired guy drive to the gym and pick up the Suburban from me. And then he would go and take someone else to the airport. So I was, <laughs> you know, I was 10, 9, 10 99 in them. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the way to go. And like in the beginning, sure. when I say the legal side, I'm trying to get insurance and run like an actual, you know, have for hire insurance uh, and do it the right way, which yeah. at the time, like it they wouldn't write any new companies in New York. And I was like, this is this is rough. I would go to several places like, sorry, we're not writing. We're not writing. We're not writing. You know, and I guess some of it was based on that accident. That's if you remember, like Long Island, we had like a couple of those, the wine tours, there was an accident. You know, so there was a lot of things that were affecting the industry, you know, and then I started to go to one of the meetings and I, I sat across from an older guy that was doing it for 35 years. And they told me the best way to do it is basically buy someone's existing book of business that'll come with the insurance policy. Ah, I see. Maybe that's more of a New York thing too, because it is so challenging. It is. To... Now, sorry, is this different? Because I've I've talked to a lot of New York operators and I should know this by now. Be, like, uh, is this different than a medallion? Is that what it's called to where you, there's only a certain number of those? That's the taxis. Like there's only a certain amount of medallions for the taxis. Oh, but so, doesn't black car have it as well? Or maybe not medallion, but a li some sort of black car license in New York City? Yes, for New York City, correct. Okay. So where I am on Long Island, it's another set of rules. Okay. But so that's the other thing. You can go in in New York City, though, obviously. It's just you can't be, what, registered as a New York City operator. You need a special Correct. IC. Correct. Okay. Like a black car base, yes. Okay, okay. And so the thing you were trying to obtain and who this older operator told you, just buy someone's current book of business and... Sorry, it's insurance you're talking about? Yeah, like, so I would inherit, I would piggyback back and inherit his insurance policy, which for wow. me, it was great because he had 20 something years of, you know, no losses. His loss runs were fabulous. So I just, you know, kind of like jumped in and then we made sure that, you know, 100%, like it's just a transfer of ownership, the business is staying intact, you know, and they put me on as like a manager and, you know, I just took his policy and ran with it. You know, and now I'm I'm 20 years later, basically with that same that same no book. Yeah. So so was this the when you went to? I'm guessing it was like a local limo meetup group you went Correct. to. It was the limo meetup group. You know, it was like one of the first or second ones that I went to, and you know, an older gentleman sat across from me that couldn't wait to get out. So you know, I you know, when can we meet? You know, we sat down and chatted, and I went to their house, and it was a, a lovely couple, and they had everything that you know I, I really ever wanted with uh you know some just some great accounts, and it was a good stepping stone for me. You know, for him it was like a kind of a retired gig, but yeah, now yeah. it gave me the insurance. It gave me, you know, now I'm legal and I oh, took my own little, I took my own little book of business and, and filled it in. That's such a great idea. I actually interviewed another guy a few months ago named by Joe of Royal Floridian in Florida. And he did something similar, but he was working for the company first. And then he eventually was like almost running the company. And then sure. they're like, we're trying to retire. Like, you know, do you have any, I forget if they went to him or he went to them, but essentially they let him like pretty much just pay it off 
you know, while working, pay off the note while working in the business. And so was it, did you completely take, I'm guessing you slowly started work, so like doing learned, the operations I, or? Yeah. So I learned a lot work? from this one as well. There's a, you know, there's always a story with everything. You know, they wanted to be paid in full uh, up front. For, for the business up front. Okay. Which, yeah. This was Mark. This was my first time really buying a business. I didn't know how this worked. I really, you know, unfortunately, scary, man. I, you know, I had some people <laughs> to ask and, you know, not enough advice at the time. Um, but I was lucky enough where I had a close, I was short some of the money. I was short half of the money and, but it's not so much, you know, you needed money in reserves too which was obviously no for like sure even having then. half is crazy by the way like that's like you know you learn life by failing sometimes but you know yeah. so what he did was he was he was like a, a money factor and he helped me get the loan and basically approved me for this you know the loan to be able to buy this business and really get me started you know the interest rate on it i don't even want to tell you because it's yeah, really like loan sharking <laughs> yeah um, yeah but yeah and set me up for these crazy daily payments and you know thank god when it first went off it went really well up until covid Ooh. so wait so what year are we talking here that you met this guy and did this deal with him when was that uh we are in like 2016 okay okay so you had about what about four years maybe or a little under four years to where it sounds like things were pretty decent. Now, what sort of, uh, was he just mainly black car? How many vehicles are we talking here? Was so it a, a just, small business? Super small. It was great because he had two cars, two black cars. I got this one like beat up Suburban. And then believe it or not, he was running like a Volvo at the time that I turned around and sold like the next day <laughs> to just have another black car. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I inherited his book. Like I said, it went really well because it helped add to mine. And, you know, at that point I was, you know, still gearing it up and trying to figure, you know, figure things out as far as, you know, how much the insurance was and payroll and paying this thing back. You know, I still had the gym at that point, you know, and managing the gym with, you know, 20 different trainers working for me. So I had oh, a lot wow. going on all at the same time. Okay. I guess I got, sorry, I must've missed that. I thought I heard trainer. You were a trainer, but you also, you owned a location. Correct. And wow, it yeah. sounds like a pretty big location to have 20, 20 trainers in that location. That's pretty wild. Yeah, we're, yeah, we do a little over 3,000 square feet. Um, I was very lucky with the guys that I had, you know, and ladies, obviously. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. There was a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces, you know, but I knew that, you know, my goal was to go into the, you know, the transportation full time. It was just, I was scared, honestly. I was afraid to give up something that I was doing for so long, meaning the personal training and, you know, it came naturally to me and, you know, like we were saying before, always been like a hustler and having multiple things going on at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, kind of afraid to let it go. And then it's funny because I actually sold it. March 1st going into COVID. I never, you know, obviously I had no idea. And it was funny. I tell the story a lot where I was literally in the truck with, it was one of my trainers that took over the gym. And I was yeah. in the truck with him at the bank when he was going into the bank to get, you know, the, the check for me, like the certified check or whatever. And I remember having the radio on and them talking about COVID and what's going to happen, like all this crazy, you know, like how, what's going to happen in the world, you know, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden, you know, so the timing couldn't have been better on my side. Yeah. Cause they're all um, shut down pretty much right for a while there yeah and then if you rewind a little bit like things were going well for me with the transportation where i you know moved out of i was living in huntington at the time and ended up getting a place out east on the water and like i felt like real good in life like things were going well i was making money you know excited to kind of take it to the next level and then all of a sudden covid Boom. happened everything which shuts down. You know, that was that was a killer. Um, obviously, the unknowns of that. And it, it led to basically me having all the cars repossessed, like yeah. right out of the driveway. You know, as most guys remember, we got that first batch of PPP money, you know, and I used all of it to pay the the payments for the cars. Yeah. You How know, many then, did you have at that? How many are we talking at, here? At that time, I had nine total. And that was a combination mm -hmm. of I had just bought a bus like three weeks before I bought a uh, a 36 passenger bus. And then I had two limos, two white stretch limos. And then I had like six or seven, you know, hot fodge of, you know, sedans and SUVs. I don't remember the exact. That's a good size uh, fleet, man. Amount. But a lot it was of a overhead. Great fleet, <laughs> a lot of overhead. Yeah. We had a yard. I moved everything into my driveway. You know, I had really great neighbors that I had a limo parked on one street and, you know, I had stuff everywhere. Yeah. And it's just, it was a really tough time. I, I never, you know, would want to go back to that. But, you know, to talk about it further. So, you know, eventually all the cars were repossessed. You know, the second batch of PPP money, I didn't use it 
to pay the cars again. It's no, like, I guess good not. Money after bad. No, you know, yeah, I, yeah, sure. You know, I regret spending the first half. <laughs> no, of it, but the I, banks, I figured. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the the banks weren't being so nice. You know, they were calling, and you know, I want my bus back. I want the. I'm like, all right, you know, come get it. Yeah. So, because uh, you don't know I, at that point, we didn't know how long, right? It, it was, was going to last. Two weeks, Mark. It was a very long two weeks. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I just mean COVID in general. Like, yeah. you know, we didn't know. Like, is things are things going to open back up soon? Like, what's going to happen? So, look, I mean, hindsight's always you know twenty twenty, and you just didn't know. And anyone would have done the same thing: put all that money, keep the cars, because you don't want to lose your whole freaking fleet, right? And uh, correct. Yeah. So this is interesting. So now I'm without a job and trying to figure out what to do. You know, this is the first time I'm really going back to like a rock bottom situation. You know, I'm sure. like, well, the training, obviously, you know, they're not allowed in the gym, so I can't go back to that. Um, and growing up as a kid, my next door neighbor owned a pool company and I used to spend summers working with him. Okay. I'm like, I got to find something to do for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I started working for a pool company and just, you know, opening, closing pools and vacuuming and, you know, kind of killing myself a little bit. But at least it kept me busy. It got me out of the house. That says you something know. about you, by the way. Like, so I think, look, I can't imagine my business went to zero. I'm transportation only. But I don't also didn't have like, you know, all the debt, all the repossessions. I'm sure that really takes a toll. But the fact that you like had the presence of mind at time be like, hey, I can either sit around and feel sorry for myself or go do something and probably just getting out of the house and even it still sucks, but you're like busy and you're not in your right. head thinking about, you know, what's going to happen and, and what could be. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it definitely that's that's the situation I was in. I was I was really depressed, obviously. And, you know, wondering if it was ever going to come back. Everything that I built is gone. You know, what are the, what's it going to be like when it does come back? You know, and it, it was rough, but I was happy. I started doing the pool thing, you know, and then I kind of I had to move from where I was. I had to move from where I was because of the, you know, this was before the rent thing or, or they were selling the house. I forget the situation. I ended up moving like two blocks over, thankfully. But while all that was going on, I actually I found a separate, another job. It was, a, I like I mentioned, I moved out on, you know, live out on the water. And it was like the town had a boat that would basically go around to different boats and remove like the waste. It was like a cesspool boat. Okay. Sure. Would like maintenance like, or whatever. Uh, on maintenance or like, you know, it's a little on the gross side, but you're basically, you know, emptying someone's boat of their waste. Oh, you know? I see. Okay. So not like cleaning the the hole, because I know when boats are in water, you have to clean the hole, but yeah. actually, oh, yeah, I like see. A pump out boat, like emptying like the toilet type thing. Sure. Okay. Okay. You know, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be out on the water. Sounds like a good gig. I'll probably do real well with tips. Oh, totally. you know, I'm going to stop the pool thing and I'm going to go take this gig. It was five days a week on the water. You know, and, I, and I'm like, this is going to be better for me, I think, mentally. So I went and I took the gig and it was great. I'm on, they let me keep the boat in my backyard and I would oh, go nice. from marina to marina and, and you know, empty out the boats and do what I had to do. Yeah. And, you know, it was, again, still, you know, trying to get by. You know, this is all summer long and I'm still doing it in September. And one day I'm helping this, this older couple like dock their boat. And, you know, they ended up like, can you help us? They were trying to get it into the slip. And I, I get close enough where I could jump on and I help them put the boat away. And the woman's like, do you do this on a regular basis? Like, can we rent you and you can help us? And, you know, we could go out. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, here's my number. So I don't think anything of it. And then I get a, a message from her. She took them out one more time. You know, no big deal. Easy. And I get a message. Or can you meet for lunch? I'm like, OK, well, I'll meet for lunch. She's like, why not? This day works great for me. So yeah. I meet her for lunch at this fancy place in Southampton. Again, Ooh. not knowing what to expect. I really don't know who she is. Like, I okay. know her first name. Was it a nice boat, more. I'm guessing? Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. 30 yeah, something yeah, yeah. foot, beautiful boat. You know, and they just wanted to be able to go out and not worry about the boat, where they're going. Like, they had no idea. Yeah. So we go for lunch and, you know, so she's like, tell me about yourself, you know? So I basically ran through the whole story that, you know, you and I are talking about. It's a hell of a story. <laughs> and she says to me, she's like, I want you to come back and I want you to check out my house. So, okay. So we, we go back and she lives in this beautiful estate in Southampton. Ooh, and she yeah. gives me a tour of this beautiful house, you know, a 20,000 square foot, you know, 20 bedrooms, beautiful. Wow. Five and a half okay. acres. Gorgeous. Gorgeous Ten, house. Must be tens like, of millions easily. Like oh, Southampton. Totally. Like yep. that's wow. Okay. Totally. And 
and I'm blown away. It's you know one of the nicest houses, obviously, I've ever seen. And I'm still wondering like where we're going with this. Whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You know, let's, like, let's... am I wasting my time here? Like, what do you know? Where are we going with this? So we finish in like what's like her office. And she's like, you know, you like the house? I said, yeah, it's beautiful. She's like, I want you to be my property manager. She's like, I know your business is going to come back. Uh, but she's like, in the meantime, I'd love if you could, you know, take care of the property for me and, and manage it until, you know, things get go up and going with you again. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is, you know, unbelievable opportunity. Yeah. You know, and then she's like, do you need health insurance? And like, I was so blown away, Mark. Like, I cried. I'm like, this oh, is incredible. Oh, I like, can't like... You know, yeah. three days before that, you know, I'm getting like wastes across my shirt and I'm like, what's, you know, where am I going with this? Yeah. You know, she offers me a phenomenal amount of money to come and work for her, take care of the house. And, you know, she does, she's like, when can you start? And I'm like, uh, Monday. You know, so I, called the, <laughs> I called the boat situation. I'm like, you know, today's my last day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I went and I started working for her and managed the entire house, the staff. And honestly, it was like one of the greatest opportunities ever. I learned so much, you know, and, and loved it from managing all the vendors coming into the house, you know, building her out a pool house, you know, just hiring chefs, firing chefs, you know, and it made wow. me a much. And I, and I learned so much from her, you know, and it's funny, it's again, as you know, you're the driver and, you know, you're listening to them on the phone behind you, you're learning from her. Oh, of you know, course. Just, yeah. You know, the interaction with her on a daily basis. Wow. You know, and getting, it must have really you know, liked you like <laughs> from the initial and just. Yeah, Again, they, it's funny how you, you know, you nailed it before when you said you meet somebody, they believe in you right away, you know, that's and, that's it. just, and that's, that's really what it was. And, you know, they were, it was a great family. It was a great opportunity. And I did that all through COVID. I did it for like, basically like the full two and a half years as things slowly started to come back. Nice. You know, and I, I remember it well where, you know, I was with the chef and I'm like sneaking phone calls. I'm like, beach limo, I can help you, you know, and it was. <laughs> And the, it's funny, the day that I realized that I had to like end the property thing was I got a phone call from Jimmy Buffett's uh, manager no. and they were looking for transportation, like basically last minute, you know, I'm like, wow, this is an unbelievable opportunity. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, the guy, you know, I'm on the phone and I couldn't talk there. And I remember begging him. I'm like, I promise I will call you back. I'm like, please just give me five minutes. I will call you right back. I'll call you right back. Yeah. You know, and the guy's like, okay, cool. You know, no problem. <laughs> and, you know, I remember going out to the car and like sneaking the phone call and it was picking up like Jimmy and all the guys and it turned into a phenomenal, you know, obviously I got it done and it yeah. turned into like a phenomenal account. And I remember like two weeks later, like going in and speaking with the owners and like, unfortunately, I'm like, it's, it's coming back and it was coming back like hard and fast. Yeah, yeah. And you now I'm like, and that's when I had to stop and, you know, I jumped full, full speed right back into the transportation thing. Yeah, I'm sure they were happy though for you, knowing like knowing your story and what you had gone through, and like you oh, yeah. know they <laughs> want you to succeed. And and I'm sure I don't know when someone it does mean something. You know, it's not it's not, and I know it's not the health insurance. Don't get me wrong, the generosity is awesome. You know what right. it is? It's they believed in you, right? Yeah. And, and when when there were probably days you didn't totally you know believe in yourself, right? Someone 100%. looked at you. And they're like, you know, this guy, he's got potential. He shouldn't like the job he's at right now. Like he has much, much higher potential. And especially when someone like apparently, you know, they've been decently successful. It sounds like in their lives, a house like that. And so, <laughs> wow, that's incredible. So how long ago was it that you switched from a uh, house manager to a uh, <laughs> limo company owner again? This will be, uh, what is this, my fourth summer now without that wow okay so my fourth okay. summer you know dove right back in you know i'm very lucky because i'm on the i'm basically i'm located in the hamptons so i have yeah. a you know special clientele out here so my totally. clientele is very different than anything we call it up island you know so i'm dealing with a very affluent you know oh, a lot yeah. of celebrities clientele <clears throat> so and the great thing is you mm -hmm. being a house manager for a while i'm sure you really got to understand your clients and like what they want, what they like, what they dislike, like just it's important in business to understand your clients and, and who you're serving. And it makes it easier to market to them, to sell to them and and to retain them as clients. And you got, it sounds like spent a lot of time with, you know, in that environment. Yeah, totally. Summers ago now that you went back in full time after landing Jimmy Buffett or, and I'm guessing they're a, uh, maybe not, Till today, but like, are you do you still do help them out sometimes or 
Yeah, we do. Thank God. We had a great relationship with him. You know, and again, another real phenomenal person and a great opportunity and great memories of, of being able to drive him. And, you know, again, another person that was a great mentor with just some great business advice and just keep plugging away. And, you know, you're always going to, you know, be knocked down. It's really, you know, how you can, you know, bounce back from stuff like that. You know, so obviously when he passed away, we, you know, it's not traveling as much, but we just did a memorial service for them a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, obviously that that led to other people out here as well. So I'm, you know, extremely thankful for that. And, you know, like I said, we are, we're in the right area. So we have a private airport very close to us. So it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of high end celebrity stuff that we do on a regular basis. And, you know, just an, an, an affluent clientele, you know, that's like the summer in the Hamptons and, you know, and have, the, have a luxury service. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucky with that. You know, the last four years, it's been, you know, every year has been different. And what's hard is you can't really look at the past because you don't really have much to base it off of because of the COVID situation and the flux of business back and forth and how that first summer, you know, if you recall, like there wasn't much European travel at all. So yeah. that affected my business in a better way because the people weren't going to Europe to vacation. They were here in the Hamptons. Ah, I never thought about that. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, so then I look back on that summer and I'm like, wow, it's, it's so... With that said, that's what led me to go after other companies because I didn't want that seasonality thing where I have a great group of drivers, everything's going amazing, and all of a sudden it becomes, you know, the day after Labor Day, which we call Tumbleweed Tuesday, everyone leaves and the business disappears. Yeah. You know, and now I'm going to lose all these great guys and have to rebuild all this again. Yeah. So I'm like, I got to figure something out. So in that process, I went... You know, I met another opportunity with a gentleman that was in it for like 35, 40 years. And I took over his book of business and he had the same type of thing, a two, three car operation. And he was based further up island. Okay. And, you know, we met, we hit it off right away. And, you know, it is our industry. And I'm sure you, you know, this already is, you know, it's, it's hard to get the truth from some people that are in this industry. <laughs> totally. So, and I say this, this, his name is Joe and Joe is such a straight shooter. And when, when he told you a dollar amount and it's funny, even you know, near now or years later, but you know, we've increased it, but he was spot on to the exact dollar of what he was bringing in. Wow. And okay. So I, took okay. O- so I took over that small company, which helped us tremendously because again, the goal was to keep this busy thing year round. Yeah. Um, so did he have just like corporate clients or he had just clients <laughs> that traveled more year round, not just a summer sort of deal? Great combination of everything. Oh, nice. Perfect. Okay. So a little and, bit of everything. And that's what you needed because it was mainly a lot of summer stuff for you, but it died down in uh, fall. And, and by the way, what's your fleet looking like right now? Is it still mainly mainly sedans, SUVs? What, what, so what are unfortunately, you right no, now? no more limos. I got rid of the limos. This is my first summer without the limos. Just really wanted to. It means two things. One, the insurance in New York was just stupid. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. became, it just became not worth it to do it and again based out here you know we could go out and talk about this if you want but like with the dot and i ended up having a lot of issues with them slowing down business where we would do a wine tour and they would stop the vehicle for an inspection and now mark you was my customer you're at the winery i'm ready to go chris where are you and now i'm an hour late to pick you up so you're immediately you're annoyed with me because i just wrecked your entire day of course. And then we would get back to settle up and, you know, you wouldn't want to pay the bill or I'd have to give you a discount or you sure. would dispute the whole thing on your credit card. Yeah. And I went through it, Mark, for an October where I had every single Saturday we had an issue. And it was so- the same group that we would have on a regular basis. They're like, you guys, we just looked at this last week. I'm like, please. So they're you know, doing they, these inspections like on days where you actually have jobs. I don't get that. Oh yeah. They would That's follow insane. you right to the winery, make sure the clients got out, and then you follow them to like an elementary school. And then you would get to the elementary school and there'd be 25 limos ahead of you. No way. What the And that yeah. was that was the writing on the wall for me. I'm like, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. And I got out of it and I just went towards the black car route. So to answer your question, we're running 25, basically like 10 SUVs. I have Escalade Suburban and then we have sedans. We just, we, I fell in love with the Volvo T90, that sedan, great car. We still have a couple of MKTs left, Sadie's S550, BMW 750. So I'm just running that. And then I have a 1935 antique that I just kind of specialize in lead wedding car or... wedding stuff yeah yeah yeah. You know, again okay. more of the high end easier to deal with you know make money and that's it 25 okay i i wasn't expecting uh 25 are those like 
vehicle, those just some of your vehicles and then some affiliates that you work closely no, with? So, or- you know, that the other thing I just, we did it all ourselves. You know, I, I don't farm out work. You know, as I grew, we just kind of, I looked at it and I just added another car, add another driver. Yeah. And, um, and that acquisition you know, of that company, you said that had been in the industry yes. a long time themselves, right? But Correct. a smaller so company it, it, or how big yes. were they? Yeah, much smaller company. But when I purchased that, it came with three more cars. So right away, we got bigger overnight. Yeah. And, and a nice book of business. I mean, a great yeah. book of business. And you know, I have a great relationship with him to this day and such a nice clientele. You know, when we were a little nervous on how that they would adapt because they were so used to him driving, you know, and I have people that I still had when I was driving, you know, but it's like you said, like they become so happy for you that you're no longer, you know, behind the wheel and you're growing the business. Yeah. You know, I used to get around with them. It's like our ongoing thing. I'm like, I can't run the ship from the engine room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> Exactly. Jeez, that's wild how quickly you've bounced back. It's well, you're obviously it bigger did. than I, you were before. Like, yeah. right? Quite and a then, bit. And then a year ago in May, there was another company located mid island that was in business for 45 years. And, you know, we again, we started with a great relationship where she would call me when she was in trouble. Okay. And it got to the point where she was giving me two, three jobs a day five jobs, you know, and I'm like, I want you to make something off of the job. And I want you to walk away happy because for five or $10, I'd rather have a friendship with you and do all of your work than to you to either one of us be upset for five or $10. And she so appreciated (laughs) that. And then, you know, same type of opportunity where it came up and she offered me to, you know, to buy her out. Wow. So I took over that one as well, which, you know, that one was a hard hit for her because, of the COVID, she lost so much corporate work. So I that's, you know, so now I, I have the three companies. And uh, like we mentioned earlier, I'm starting Florida in November. Oh, so wow. we got we got three cars going down to the Sarasota area for November. And a lot of that was it was inspired twofold. It was inspired from a lot of my existing clients that I have that go back and forth. Yeah. And they were like, you really need to get something going down here and just pushing me and pushing yeah. me, you know, because they were disappointed with some of the service that they were getting or, you know, the, there wasn't service so much in Annemarie Island. And it was, you know, more of like an Uber feel and it wasn't so luxurious. And, you know, Sarasota, Annemarie Island is really, you know, it's it's come up a, a long way and like kind of a real hot area now. And it's only oh, yeah. growing. So I feel like now is a great time for, for me to get in, you know, Lakewood Ranch and Bradenton. So I feel like it's a great opportunity for me to get in there now. No, totally. No, I know personally it's growing. Uh, that's what I've heard because I've had clients there now for a few years and it's crazy how much more s- search volume there is in that area just in the last few years. Um, all of these, uh, it seems like you're really good at networking, meeting people and building relationships. And it just sounds like building trust, really. A lot of these you know, mentors along the way, I mean, I shouldn't say what's your secret, but like, yeah, I I guess all of these relationships you forged, like some of them you met at, I think you mentioned obviously one at that personal training gym, one at that like kind of limo group meetup. And then these other ones were they just affiliates that you guys used each other. And then eventually- I'd say the biggest thing, Mark, it's it's, because I think about this often. I'm asked that question quite a bit, you know, getting involved with the personal training. And, you know, I got into fitness in 99, 2000, where if you think back, that's when really, that's when fitness really started to make a big, a boom and really take off. Yeah. Um, You know, looking back on it and I got in, it's such a a great time because now the market's just so oversaturated and i got into it and you got to remember like people that can afford a personal trainer obviously it's an affluent clientele you know i started in a country club and that was like being you know thrown right into the fire where yeah. i did mostly listening like i became a very good listener which that's where people wanted to be able to just talk and vent you know, and yeah. then you listen to the certain things and the keywords and you watch them interact and, you know, they expose you to, you know, certain things in their life that, you know, kind of shape you and like, wow, I, I want that. You know, I want that nice car. How did, you know, how do you do that? Or, you know, what's an LLC? Like, you know, how do you set that up? What's the difference? You know, and just asking, you know, to me, which was a stupid question, but I was learning, you know, what to them is a stupid question, but I was learning so much from it. Yeah. Um, wow. That's so I, so... I really contribute a lot of it to the, you know, to the personal training and, and meeting like that type of clientele, you know, very blessed with some of the, you know, business guys that, you know, had my back. And, you know, to this day, I still talk to a, a lot of them. Like, what do you think about this? Or, you know, wh- how do you know when it's time to grow? I'm like, this is what I did this month. What do you think? You know, and just running, you know, different scenarios by them. 
but yeah, I think a lot of it's just, you know, listening and not being afraid to over speak and kind of knowing your role. Yeah. Oh, and not being afraid to uh, ask a quote unquote ask question, stupid yes. or even a question you might, oh, I should know this, but not being afraid to ask those questions. And yeah, it seems like you've been training almost your whole life around a certain type of clientele. Yes. healthy clientele. And let's be honest, like you are who you hang out with and you probably learn how they think about lots of things, not just business. Sure. There's people that inherited it, but I think they say 70% of millionaires are first generation. And so they're doing something, they're doing something different, right? That the average person isn't. So, wow, what a crazy story and what a great story too. Cause yeah. it, it, it was like this, right? It's a roller coaster. It's definitely it's a roller coaster. You know, people would used to tease me like the amount of things that you've done in your life you know, and I feel like, you know, looking back now, it's like, I never would have thought it would be at this point. Yeah. That's you know, especially uh, like from, you know, from summer to summer. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, dude. Well, yeah. Congratulations um, for keeping at it too. And I, I think that yeah. actually, yeah. When people see, you know, how you handle adversity, right? Correct. Because that, that really is, if you've had smooth sailing, you know, your whole life, yeah, they're super valuable lessons. And now, if anything comes your way, most things probably are much smaller than some exactly. of those big hits. And that's they feel what, you know, so that's much what smaller. I, I tease my, I tease the office manager all the time. Like we went through that. We could go through anything. Yeah. You know, our, our problems aren't as great as that, you know, and they weren't with me when I went through some of that stuff. So it's definitely a journey, you know, what life can take you sometimes. So just curious, it sounds like those other businesses, you're still keeping their brand because you said three companies. And so they probably yes. have a really established brand. You know, why roll it up all under and lose that, right? It's, it's funny that you say that because we're actually going through like a little bit of a rebranding process because you got to remember too. Now you go back to like, it's 110 limo, you know, they're going 48 years, 48 years ago, there was no internet. Everything was word of mouth. You yeah. know, everything was, you know, it was an old school, you know, they were in the stretch limo. So those, oh, yeah. you know, what's cool is when you talk to some of those clients that have been traveling with them for 30 years, like their stories are great, you know, because they used to go to the airport in a limo. Now they get yeah. taken in an SUV. And, you know, so it is a lot of rebranding because she was an older lady. She was in her 70s. You know, so it's definitely a little bit of rebranding. The first year I called it, let's just keep the train on the tracks and, you know, let's take it day by day. I don't want to implement too much change. You know, I didn't want to change the prices. I didn't want to rock the boat. That's kind of what, you know, we did for the first year. And now we're starting to make some changes and, you know, slowly grow it where we want it to be and kind of brand everything together a little bit more. Because like you said, it's a little tricky to have three different, you know, sure. components that we're trying to run. The smaller one in, in Nassau County, that's kind of just fell into my everyday book of business okay. with those people because it was, you know, very mom and pop, one guy driving all the time. And, you know, they, they've adapted very quickly. So okay. I don't have to do so much branding with that. And so plans for the future. I mean, you already mentioned the Florida thing, like what, uh, you know, five years from now, have you thought about like, what, what's the goal? Just keep expanding the, the New York or Long Island, I should say business, and then adding on the location in Florida and starting to grow. Where do you see the future and vehicles, sedans, SUVs? Do you see yourself ever getting into? So that's, that's what's funny, Mark, where you, I've learned, you know, when we first started this conversation from what, uh, you know, the limo company that I work for you know, that got me into this is bigger isn't necessarily better. So I really want to hold true to that. And I'm, you know, I think what we have now I'm very comfortable with. Yeah. So I want to really watch the scaling part and I'm very happy where we are. And I, yeah. I definitely don't want to water it down as a business, you know, and I like to keep the things running where they are, if that makes sense. No, um, totally. You know, and just, you can still improve. Overall product. Like you, I'd rather keep growing it organically, you know, and, and kind of go in that direction. Hopefully some of the corporate work will eventually come back. Um, we are seeing some of it slowly. So I would like to see that hopefully in the next five years, maybe some more corporate travel goes back. Yeah. And then a little bit of a build out in Florida, but I'm pretty happy with the scale that it's at. Not that I'm complacent with it by any means, but I don't necessarily feel that bigger is better at this point. Definitely not. And that's a pretty big, what I find, even, even in my own business, the last six months, we haven't done a huge marketing push, but you know what we've done is we've cleaned up our operations. We've made things every little thing a little bit better, right? And so right. that's that's totally something you can do. And with a business of your size, that can really, that work 
is like almost never ending. And, and then over time you can be more profitable. And, and cause as you probably know, like when you are trying to grow, especially quickly, you know, the profit is usually much less because you're putting more, allocating more capital into like marketing. And there's something to be said for like knowing, Hey, this is a good size. We're doing what we do. Well, let's just focus on continuing to deliver a very high level of service to our clients exactly. and take care of them. And by the way, it will grow on its own if you focus on that, right? Because they Correct. will tell other people about you. And that's what we've been doing now. And some people, it's funny, they, they call up like, oh, you're a best kept secret. You know, that they don't almost, they don't even don't, don't want to even share you sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, which, which is a funny, great time. That's how people are. But yeah, it's that's, that's kind of what my thoughts are. You know, I'd like to have a little bit more of a social media presence, yeah. uh, you know, revamping some of the stuff, you know, to tie in Florida, obviously, you know, we, we're doing some updating with our phone system to have some more advertising going on with our phone system. So just, you know, some little things. Yeah, it sounds like and because I talked to so many limo businesses and of course, I own an online marketing agency. So it's like, you know, everything looks like what's that phrase? Like every nail looks like you need a hammer. It's something like that. I don't yeah. think every business, limo business needs paid advertising. You just need to figure out what is the best way, what's worked for you to grow your business. And to be honest with you, with online advertising, especially in the beginning, usually it's not that profitable. And it really does take doing it over a long period of time to get more and more profitable. And so for those that have found a way to, you know, grow a business like you, have, it sounds like you probably haven't done a ton of online advertising. It's been more acquisitions and really just focusing on your customers and getting referrals, really. Yeah, that's honestly, you're right. I would meet with these people with some of the marketing stuff and I felt like everyone was just full of it. You know, it was like a money scam. I just didn't feel comfortable. So I just kept on the same track, you know, like I feel like reputation is everything. Yes. You know, and like you said, and if you get the right quality of drivers and just believe in that and and keep pushing it. And, you know, I think that's what helps. But I think you do have to have, you know, something on Google. So when someone Googles you, they can at least find your phone number. Some of no. the, you know, some of the silly stuff. The basics. Um, and, you know, and everyone's doing the social media stuff now. So it's like, you know, you got to kind of just do it and, and, and jump in some way. Yeah, you know, the bare minimum, I'd say, is just make sure when someone searches your company, they can at least find that you know, you have a website, they can find your phone number, even better if they can find some reviews. But here's the thing, if you're getting a, most of your clients through referrals and they're just repeat customers, sure. that's not even as important when your online reputation and by online reputation, I really mean, do you have, you know, a Google business profile with reviews? Do you have like, you know, maybe for some people, Yelp, a TripAdvisor, WeddingWire yep. and so on and so forth. Those things become a lot more important when you are doing online advertising, pay-per-click, SEO, things like that. But if you're getting most of your business through referrals, that is the review, right? They're not exactly. like someone referred them. They're not going to go online and be like, oh, I wonder what their reviews are like. It's like, you know, they trust that person. And that's better than any online review, right? Is someone actually 100%. saying you yeah. should use these guys, right? hundred percent. Exactly. So. Exactly. You know, we go over to the airport, the private airport, and we bring bagels. I cut bagels up and put them on a platter. And that goes you know, so far of just a little gesture like that, you know, to the private airport so that, you know, when they're looking for car service. So uh, I spend I more that. time doing stuff like that. I love that. Awesome. awesome. Chris. You have quite this story, man. This has been actually a lot of fun. Most of my interviews are, but this one has been especially fun because I love the roller coaster rides. And uh, it's cool to hear about someone who's done done it so differently. I've only had one other interview, interviewee that talked a lot about, you know, potentially acquiring, you know, businesses. And so it's really cool how you grew your business and uh, just want to say congratulations on your success. And thank you. Thank you. You know, so much for doing this. No, I really appreciate it, Mark. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Cool. So Chris Pinto, Beach Limo NY, soon to be Beach Limo Florida as well. Thanks for joining me, Chris. Anytime. Thanks, Mark.